In this week's lesson, we will be studying the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram and how stars evolve throughout their lifetime. Although this topic can be a little tricky to grasp at first, once you understand it, you will see stars in a completely new light. By the end of this week, you will be able to compare and contrast the different types of stars and diagram them on the HR diagram. You will also be able to identify why there are different types of stars and compare how different sized stars evolve during their lifetime. The Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, or HR diagram, was created in 1910 by Ana Hertzsprung and Henry Norris Russell and represented a major advance in astronomy towards helping us understand stellar evolution, or how stars change over time. The HR diagram graphs stars based on their temperature and luminosity. You can see temperature graphed on the x-axis with the hottest stars on the left and the coolest stars on the right. Luminosity is graphed on the y-axis. Luminosity is how bright a star is compared to our sun. Our sun has a luminosity of 1. Brighter stars are graphed above it and dimmer stars below. 90% of all stars appear in the center portion of the HR diagram. This is called the main sequence and is where stars spend most of their lives. Stars are considered main sequence stars once their core becomes hot enough at 10 million degrees Kelvin for nuclear fusion to begin. Nuclear fusion occurs in the core of all main sequence stars. In nuclear fusion, hydrogen is fused to form helium. How long a star stays on the main sequence depends on its temperature. Hotter stars will burn their hydrogen faster than cooler stars. Once a star burns all of its hydrogen, it is no longer considered a main sequence star and moves to a different section of the HR diagram. We will discuss this more in the next lesson for the week about stellar evolution. The first slide I showed you was a very simple version of the HR diagram. This image gives a more thorough and accurate depiction of it. On this HR diagram, you can see that temperature is still listed on the x-axis but is written above the diagram. This is because stars are broken up into different spectral classes based on their temperature. Type O stars are the hottest and type M stars are the coolest. One way you can remember the spectral classes is through the mnemonic O be a fine girl kiss me. O B A F G K M. Each spectral class is further broken up into 10 subclasses. These subclasses are not depicted on this diagram, but you will see them in one of this week's activities. They are identified by the numbers 0 through 9. For example, a B0 star would be the hottest of the B class stars, whereas a B9 star would be the coolest of the B stars. However, a B9 star would still be warmer than an A0 star, which is the next class on the HR diagram. Our star, the Sun, is a G2 star. You might also notice that opposite of luminosity is absolute magnitude. Absolute magnitude is the same as luminosity, how bright a star actually is. However, they are measured on different scales. Although our sun's luminosity is 1, our sun's absolute magnitude is positive 4.83. The more negative a star's absolute magnitude, the brighter it is, and the more positive a star's absolute magnitude, the dimmer it is. This can be confusing because in math, when one makes a graph, positive always goes up or to the right and negative to the left or down. However, on the HR diagram, it is reversed. Now, I really like this particular HR diagram for individuals who are more comfortable using the HR diagram. Not only does it show where various famous stars are located, but it shows the color of the stars in various locations on the HR diagram. Although we're used to the color blue representing things that are cold and red representing things that are hot, in actuality, the warmest stars are blue or violet in color, and the coolest are red. Although red stars are the coolest of all stars, they are still really, really hot. We can even see this represented on Earth, where fires and flames that are yellow and orange are actually cooler than flames that are white or blue. Just think of campfires and welding torches. 
Our sun is considered a yellow dwarf star because its visible radiation is more intense in the yellow-green portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. And although it is actually white in color from the surface of the Earth, it may appear yellow because of atmospheric scattering of blue light. I also like this HR diagram because it shows the relative sizes of the stars as well, especially with regards to the small white dwarfs and the very large giants and supergiants. You can also see that even though stars are on the main sequence, main sequence stars differ in size as well. Our sun is considered an average size star. Additionally, this HR diagram shows the approximate lifespan of each star type, which is based on the temperature in the core. Hotter stars burn or fuse the hydrogen in their core faster than cooler stars. Hotter stars, like blue main sequence stars, can be on the main sequence for tens or hundreds of millions of years, where some cooler stars can be on the main sequence for hundreds of billions or even trillions of years. Scientists really don't even know how long of a lifespan some cooler stars, like red main sequence stars, might have. Their main sequence could be hundreds of billions of years. One can easily use the HR diagram to compare stars. For example, if we pick our sun and compare it to a red supergiant like Antares, our sun is warmer than Antares, but Antares is brighter than our sun. If we compare the white dwarf Procyon B to the blue dwarf Spica, although Spica is a little bit warmer than Procyon B, Procyon B is dimmer than Pica. In our next lesson for the week, you will learn about the life cycle of stars called stellar evolution. Additionally, you'll learn about how a star's location on the HR diagram changes based on where it is in its life cycle.